busy day, so I need all the heavy. Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and I'm talking about the books that I've read in sep September. <laughs> little background change I recently reorganized some shelves so I can have more of my favorites in view here and the camera angles kind of different because I want to have different things behind me sometimes so in September I got back into fantasy which is so exciting it's been a really long time I've only read a handful of fantasies since really like April and so I read predominantly fantasy and I read one nonfiction um and so let's talk about those but the first book i finished and i don't want to get it's all the way up over there now it used to be over here it was the eye of the world by robert jordan i did a vlog i'll link it but i surprisingly really enjoyed this book uh i listened to the audio along with following along with a physical copy it is the first book in the eye of the the world of time the wheel of time series and um i was very intimidated because it is the first book in like 14 or 15 books i can't remember the exact number it is a chunky fantasy it was written in the 90s but surprisingly it read really easy um i do think it was too long there are definitely parts that i was like okay robert we didn't need all this but overall i thought it was really good like i'm interested enough to read the next one and i'm just gonna take it book by book i'm not committing to the whole series um, but definitely hopefully this month going to get to the great hunt which is the second book and then we'll see from there i am mad though because i was so proud of myself i was like i read the first one so now i can read watch the show and not worry about it but then people told me that the first season of the show it's gonna be on amazon prime is a combination of like the first three books so <sighs> now i have to now I have to get through those. So it'll be a journey that I will obviously keep you up to date with, but very pleased and shocked uh, how much I enjoyed the first book. The second fantasy that I finished, also have a vlog for the next two that I want to talk about, was The Sword of Kai Again by M.L. Wang. This, okay, well, that's just lazy, it's right here. <laughs> here you go. The Sword of Kai Again by M.L. Wang. This is a self published fantasy. I was not aware it was so chunky, but I read it first. On my kindle it is on kindle unlimited if you pay for that you can read it and so for some reason i didn't think it was this chunky but i loved it so much i had to get a physical copy i definitely will be rereading this book but this book put me through it i loved it from page one i was very into it it does a lot of it is very character focused so this is i'm pretty sure this is a japanese inspired fantasy but it's in this fantasy world um, of kaigen and it's following basically this legendary family that have these warriors like the men in the family are through history have been known to be very powerful and they have like this special move and this is I think people call it like water bending is that what it is magic because certain people who come from like certain types of people can manipulate water so they can like freeze it and like use water drops it water droplets and you know make it into an ice pick like it's so cool how she explains it and i got such a good visual image in my mind and i really want this to be an adaptation because i think it would look amazing there's some people who can you know manipulate fire and like go through the earth it's really so like elemental magic and essentially the story is following this family there's a wife who is you know supposed to be may have children take care of the house be very subservient but she has a different past than a lot of women in her position where she left home and she went to school and she learned to fight and all these things and now she's doing this so you kind of learn like why like how she ended up in this place her husband's very straightforward kind of closed off strict making sure to carry the family traditions and then she has sons and primarily one that you are getting the point of view of Mamoru I don't know if I'm saying that right but you're getting her point of view for the most part and then his and the way I love them both so much and the way ML Wang just oh this is so good I really think if you don't connect with the characters early on I don't know if you'll love it as much but I definitely connected to them and was so interested in their like dynamic and then their inter enters this conversation of 
like questioning authority, questioning your government, because in this story, they're very like, you know, loyal to the empire. And then there are people who are outsiders who come to move into the town who kind of bring up questions like, is this all real? Is everything they're telling you true? Like it, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. If you get attached to the characters, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get emotional epic battle in here and the way she wrote it I mean it was a movie playing in my mind I really need this to be adapted but I thought it was amazing I will say my only qualm is that kind of like I think it's the last chapter or last two chapters there is a part introduced or not introduced but something talked about that is never resolved and it really if you don't know this is a standalone you might think like oh we're gonna get another book following that storyline because we don't know what's going on there and if you're Friday then you know but okay actually spoilers so you have five four three two one I'm going to spoil things in this book I did not expect Mamoru to die I kept going I was like let me read that again and then I would go to the next page and I'm like no but he like comes alive right and I was still kind of waiting for a couple chapters for him to like you see a finger move or something and he was just like really unconscious or they have some way to bring him back like I was like we're in the middle of the book maybe a little over half you can't kill one of the main characters it destroyed me I don't know how it destroyed me okay he fought so hard why did why did she do this to him like but the part at the end that I'm talking about when her friend is it Robin from her yeah from her previous life comes to Kaigen and before he leaves he's talking about what is going on in like the sit like this theory he has about what's going on because in the book at the end towards the end there's like I forgot what they call them but something that comes up and it distracts them and there it steals a child and this thing is going around stealing children and he has like this theory of what they're doing but he's not sure and I'm like I want to know what that is I want to know I want to follow him and see what he figures out like I want another book that follows that and I know there's like a young adult maybe series um they're like 10 15 it follows like Robin's children maybe but I don't I want a direct sequel to this to know what Robin found that is my biggest issue with this and that she destroyed my feelings by killing Mamoru okay end of spoilers anyway this is five stars this was five stars. I loved it so much. I highly recommend it if you want to stand alone fantasy, even if, you know, maybe one day she'll surprise us and give us another one, but highly, highly recommend. In that same vlog, I read Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, and this is another fantasy, adult fantasy, that is set in the pre Columbian or pre Columbian America. So, one thing I really loved about this book, I love this map. This is another one I did the audio along with the physical and I think the audio is really great. But for me, I couldn't just listen to the audio because I was getting confused at first. This also is one of the best opening chapters ever. It is bonkers how this starts out and I'm like, okay, we're going for quite a ride. So this story follows, we have really four points of view. We have Shiala, we have Serapio and then there's two other people whose names I can't remember because I didn't love their POVs as much but we Sera excuse me Serapio and Shiala are in different places and then the other two POV one's like a priest or priestess and another he's like a crow son like in this clan of people they're already in this one city I think of Tova and then Shiala and Serapio End, end up meeting up and they are on their way to Tova. So half of the story, a little over half is kind of you get a journey in Shiala and Serapio's point of view. And surprisingly, journeys can go either way for me. Sometimes I can get really into it, but sometimes I can get bored. And I was really into this one. I preferred their, their POVs over the ones in the city, even though some things towards the end did start happening there that I found interesting. I just found the POVs in the city I don't know I just didn't click with them I was like uh, okay but once they're finally there and like 
things start popping off. It gets really good and was really hard to put down. The first half for me was slower because it definitely is introducing the world. It is the first book. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a duology or a series, but it is the first book. So it's introducing the world, doing the world building, which I did really enjoy because it's so different. And so I love just all of the descriptions. I'll talk about this in my video, but just all of the descriptions of clothing and like face paint and stuff and all these different like religions and cultures that they have. And you're obviously watching the journey and then the other two you're trying to figure out what's going there and how they're connected. So once you figure out all of how this is connected, it really starts like hitting, you're like, oh shit, this, 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 this. Cause essentially Serapio is, uh, when he's younger, something happens to him because he's like told that he has like some special thing to do when he's older. And then Shiala is basically tasked with taking him to the city. And then these other two people, one is a priestess and she's basically uh, going through it with her priesthood, her priestdom, her folks. And the other guy is in this crow clan who are not really friendly with priesthood. So there's a lot going on, a lot of animosity, different clans against people, different people like, this is my religion. We're waiting for our foretold person to come back. And yeah, so the first half, I would be like, oh yeah, I should read Black Sun. I'd pick it up and I would enjoy it, but it wasn't something that I was like, <gasps> like needing to pick up. Now, The Sword of Kai again, when I wasn't reading it and doing other stuff, I was like thinking about getting back to it. This one, not to the second half. And then once I got to the second half, I think I finished this during um, some of Princess's reading sprints. And so I read like, the second half in one night. But the first half took me a little longer. So I think if you like the idea and like the world building and everything, but it's still kind of slow in the beginning, I think it should hang in there because I think it really picks up. But I gave this one four stars, still really enjoyed it. And the ending, and then for some reason, I thought the second book was coming out in November. It comes out in April. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna read the first book because that one's coming out in April. Okay, yeah, great for me. Then I read Jade City by Fonda Lee. So obviously everyone's been talking about this in book Twitter book two. And I was like, ah, ah, yeah, ah, ah. I literally have just been on the fence, right? Like I will read them, I'll get to it. Let me tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you why I read this sooner. So two things, uh, Illumicrate is selling these gorgeous hardcover copies of them. And I was like, Jessica, you haven't read it. it cannot be Trash Box 20. And then I finished the Sword of Kai again and I was like, I want more Asian inspired fantasy. So I, my library hold came in just in time and I was like, mm. And I tore through it. Oh my gosh. Uh, again, I connected with it from page one. I think it's a very uh, much, if you don't love the characters, you may not love it as much. Although more, it's definitely more action and more things happen than the sort of Kai game, but I still think the characters are a big part of it. And if you don't like them, you're really not gonna love the story because it is really focused on um, these clans in this city um, in kind of their beef <laughs> if you will it's really like it's definitely in a fantasy asian country um but it really feels like the godfather or like the sopranos a little bit because it's basically like the no peak clan and then the mountain clan and essentially in the story there is jade like the the, ma the, ma the material the mineral the whatever and only certain people can harness the power of it and just like makes like their hearing and their sight and their speed and their power like more enhanced. And if you are someone who like can't like it can make you really sick um, if you can't like harness the power of Jade. And so there used to be like one clan and then things happen. And so now there's two big rival clans and there's two little smaller ones. So they kind of, it's like, you know, in any kind of mafia movie, they have their areas of town that they run. They have their businesses that they protect and those businesses pay money to them. And so in this book, they're kind of going back and forth, you know, a little tit for tat tat for tit, whatever you want to call it. And some things, some things are happening, some movement, some uh, people in certain positions, you know, there's some questions on loyalty and questions on is this clan going to take over this clan. And I loved all of it. Now, 
I will die for Hilo, okay? Hilo, Hilo, Anden, I just, I love them. I love them so much. I so overall loved it and like was so anxious reading the whole thing because like I clicked with the characters so fast that I was like the whole time reading it just worried. And the, I, so I bought the first two books in floppy paperback, but they're not here yet. So I haven't read Jade War yet. And then Jade Legacy comes out in November. But the problem is it's gonna come out in hardback. So then I have to wait to get the floppy paperback, but I don't know what edition I'm gonna have to read because like if I, I hate buying full price eBooks, but uh, I'm having, I'm having issues. Just know I love Jade City. I love Jade City, okay? I'm in the, I'm in, I'm in the cool kid group. I'm in the bubble, the, the hype train. Choo choo, I'm on it. I love it, okay? <laughs> My last well, this is like sci fantasy is Gideon in the Night by Tamsin Muir. I've had this book on my list for a while and then I got the a copy from a wonderful subscriber, a physical copy because there are a lot of names and I tried to read it as an ebook and I was like, I don't know if this is working. So I had the physical book, was moving slow, also did the audio, a lot of audio. I will say I love the audio. I love the narrator, um, thought her voices that she did was really great. There is some really good humor. It's not for everyone. Obviously, humor is subjective, but things that really did make me, you know, lol. You know, I laughed out loud for real in some parts. But overall, still, I don't think I feel so conflicted. I don't think it's for me. I I'm struggling with trying to figure out how to give you like so getting the ninth, like I said, is like sci fantasy. It is in space. And there's like nine houses, Gideon and this other person, Harrow, lived in the ninth house, which is basically focused on like necromancy and it doesn't sound like a great place to live. Like it's mostly dead things, people. Um, and Gideon is an orphan essentially and she's kind of like a ward of the ninth house and she wants to escape. Um, and she's always coming up with escape plans that are always thwarted by Harrow the ninth, who's basically like the queen daughter or they call it like the reverend daughter of the ninth house and always thwarted. But in this uh, story, essentially, there's like something that Harrow wants to do and needs Gideon's help and is like, if you help me do this thing, I will give you your freedom after I achieve, you know, my goal. And that involves leaving the ninth house to go to the first house, fourth house can't remember basically a different space station planet and it basically is like a competition but then people start dying so it's like a murder mystery too because they can't figure it out because they're like well we're all on this planet or space station wherever they are and it's only us here who's killing who you like gotta like is it you is it you is there something here we didn't know of and so that's a, a brief overview. So I did, like I said, like the humor for the most part. Gideon's a very like crass person. And I love, especially with the audio, that Harrow calls Gideon griddle. Every time the narrator said griddle, I, I just had to <laughs> like, it was so funny to me. She'd be like, what do you want griddle? And I, so great. I love that. Um, and the, murder mystery part I think was probably my favorite part it is very mm, I would say descriptive of how like bodies are found so that might kind of gross you out I guess you can kind of say that's kind of like body horror because you know like someone's like someone's impaled or someone's head is melt like rotting or something I think it gets very descriptive but the murder mystery element I think is the most interesting part but the other parts and like the I guess you can call it the I don't know if it's like the politics and, and the structure of like kind of their world and government and stuff I still really don't get and at the end I was not super like mm, I still want to know or I want to know what the, what's going to happen in the next one that's called Harrow the Ninth or Harrow the something I just I still feel like I need to process my thoughts and hear some other people talk about it because I didn't hate it but I didn't love it and I'm just not certain I want to continue. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. I don't know. If you read Gideon the Night I would love to hear your thoughts because it's a lot. It's very interesting. 
writing style and just story. Sometimes it felt too convoluted where I just like would have to like go back because I'd be like, but what are you talking about? And like, at one point I was like, I'm not gonna be flipping to the front of this every time you say somebody's ridiculous name. So I'm just whatever. The names I know, I know, and the other people I know, they're not Harrow and they're not Gideon. So it's a lot, I don't know. And then finally, my nonfiction book that I read was a um, Libro FM advanced copy through their influencer program. I think, well, I'm behind on all of these, but this one came out in June. So it's uh, Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. So it is a memoir. I do not read a lot of memoirs, but I was hearing good things about this one. And I had not followed Ashley C. Ford on Twitter, but I definitely knew of her and like seen her tweets from other people that I follow. So I was like, okay, heard good things and you know, black woman's memoir, cool. And I really loved this. I felt like, not like we have very similar stories, but being a black millennial woman in the United States, there's some shared experiences there. And there were just very, there were certain moments that really hit me. Um, I wanna, I have a video idea for this and like another book and then I'm gonna try to see a couple books that just like, where I really felt seen and like really, uh, yeah, just really felt seen. But there were times like some of it hit so close to me that it made me anxious where I would like have to stop reading it because it just made me anxious because it just brought up things from my childhood and brought up issues and um, oh yeah, it affected me <laughs> a lot. And there were moments where I would like listen to it like while I was walking Nigel and at this one point I was walking, I don't think it was dark yet and I was like bawling. And these dudes walked by and I'm probably sure they were like, what's wrong with her? But I was just like bawling. It, um, there was one quote where it said, it wasn't lost on me that I mostly spoke my truth in the spaces where my family was absent. It, yeah, yes. Um, so I don't want to go into too much here because I want to talk about it more in depth in a different video, but it just, there was just some experiences, um, that really resonated with me and it was just really interesting to just learn, you know, about her different journey and things that she went to and things that she went through. And one of the big things that resonated with me was just like the, you know, the difficult relationship that she's had with her mom. And like, I think a lot of black women uh, around my age may have like similar experiences with their mother because it's just like on black twitter when you're like dang did we all have the same childhood just like certain things your parents did and said um and so i'm really glad that i read that one it is uh i definitely would like to get a copy physically and i want to listen to some parts of it again because like it has just has me in the feels but uh, really a good one, especially if you're a black woman, black femme, millennial. I think a lot of it could, you could relate to, you know, especially if you came up, you know, you know, in lower class or single parent home or it's just been, you just had a, you know, not easy upbringing, not the worst, but not easy upbringing. A lot of that may, may relate to. And I really did. So I'm really glad I read that one. And I obviously read less things than I did in August, but the quality overall is really great. And I'm really happy to be back in a fantasy mood. Um, although <laughs> so many books on my list are chunky now instead of, you know, a lot of like shorter thriller and like romance books, but it ebbs and flows. I'm still gonna throw those in here. It's October, so I'm trying to read some horror and thriller books this month for sure, but also still some san some fantasy, some sci-fi and fantasy. So anyway, if you read any of those books, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Tell me about a surprise that you had this month. I was surprised by the eye of the world. So did you read any book this month that really surprised you? Definitely let me know down below. Please give this video a like and think about subscribing to the channel. But before 
I go, I have to thank my patrons and like, I know that sounds just like, oh, I have to do this at the end of every video, but I really, really appreciate everyone who's a part of my Patreon. Um, you know, whether it's at the smallest tier or the highest, like taking your own money to support me, I really appreciate it. And then with this past week, um, I've just really appreciated you all and like your encouraging messages and support and I'm gonna cry. <laughs> But um, yeah, I don't do this like, you know, at the end of the video, just because like it's a thing. Like I said, I was gonna do it, but I, I really mean it. I, I appreciate it. You know, if you do one month, if you do however many, like it means a lot that um, people care that much about my content that they want to help me monetarily. So thank you. Woo, got a bitch in her feelings, so. <laughs> Shout out to Bebe's besties, Kayla, Jamie, Rainer, Danielle, Katie, Bobby, Jen, Kristen, Leo, Kate, Terry, Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elizaveta, Amber, Celine, Heidi, Maria, and Serena. And of course, to the Nigel of Andrea stands, Brianna, Katrina, Maya, Rosie, Ava, Claire, Carrie, Tyriel, Demery, Rainey. And of course, a big thank you to friends of Bebe and Bebe's admirers. Nigel and I appreciate you all so much. And don't worry, I keep buying him toys, but he keeps destroying them. Anyway, check out the description. I'll have all of the books linked um, that I talked about. Please support my channel, my social media, other things you may be interested in down below. So I hope that you are blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreened. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. I have learned to cope and love and hope that's why I am here now. And now you see another me, I'm loaded and moving. I'm high it up, don't shut me down. ABBA has released two new songs and I am obsessed and waiting for the full album. Like, I need it. <laughs>